Bondi, Bondi. These absolute mad lads. 20 years after the release of Digimon World 3, last Friday, the 9th of September, Vemmon, Snatchmon, Destromon, and Galacticmon were added to the official Digimon reference book with brand new official artwork. For those less familiar, these guys are the game's final boss line, and for the last two decades, they have literally only existed inside the game, with pretty much no acknowledgement in wider Digimon media. But now, in 2022, on their designer's very birthday, they have become true Digimon. And four days later, they got turned into cards. And as an old man who played a lot of Digimon World 3 as a kid, I gotta say, this is just amazing. But what is even more amazing is how their effects faithfully recreates the events of the game itself. So what do they do? And how does the deck run? Well, let's talk about it. First, we have the Dex Level 3, the Artificial Digimon Vemon, Rookie, Unknown Unknown. You can include up to 50 cards with this card's card number in your deck, so just like uh, Eosmon and Searcher. On main, by suspending this Digimon, reveal the top 3 cards of your deck, add 1 Snatchmon, Destromon, Galacticmon, or Fusionize from among them to your hand, and place 1 Vemon from among them at the bottom of this Digimon's evolution cards. Return the remaining to the bottom of your deck in any order. On Inheritable, your turn. Once per turn, when this Digimon would evolve into Destromon or Galacticmon, reduce the memory cost of evolution by one. So we can start to see two things. First of all, your basic level 3 has an effect to increase its evolution cards for no memory cost. And since you can include up to 50 copies of it in your deck, it is highly likely you will be able to evolve into Vemmon starting from turn 1 and basically almost every turn. So immediately, I think Dorymon is going to be one of the best Digitama to run in this deck because it creates a very consistent draw engine in conjunction with this effect. And by accumulating more Vemmon in evolution cards, you steadily decrease the cost to evolve into level 5 and level 6, so that is probably one of the deck's main goals. Next, Snatchmon. On Evolve, you may place up to 2 Vemmon from your trash to the bottom of this Digimon's evolution cards. Then, if this Digimon has 4 or more Vemmon in its evolution cards, return 1 Fusion Eyes from your trash to your hand. Now this is a really sick recreation of the events of Digimon World 3 because near the end of the game, 4 Vemmon actually fuse together to become Snatchmon. And that's why the number 4 is really important here. Not only that, the cards are designed such that you should be able to naturally achieve this. So for example, let's say you move out your Vemmon from the raising area, you suspend it to activate its effect, and give it another Vemmon from the top of your deck. Then if you evolve it into Snatchmon, and add two more Vemmon from your trash, you will have exactly four in its evolution cards. Also allowing you to recycle Fusion Eyes, which is the signature move of the entire line. On Inheritable, all turns once per turn when you return a Vemmon from this Digimon's evolution cards to the bottom of your deck, unsuspended spend this Digimon, and this Digimon gains Blocker until the end of your opponent's turn. The significance of this effect will become much clearer once we look at Destro and Galactic. But first, why don't we look at Fusion Eyes? This is a 1 cost black option card, but when you would use this card if you have Snatchmon in play, reduce the cost by 1, allowing you to essentially play it for free. On main, by placing 1 Vemmon or Destromon from your trash at the bottom of one of your Digimon's evolution cards, one of your Digimon may evolve into Destromon or Galacticmon in your trash by paying its memory cost. This is another nice drawback because Fusion Eyes is the move that Vemmon and Snatchmon will use in order to basically consume or absorb their fallen opponents in order to grow and evolve further. And this contributes to the deck's consistency as well because as you might have guessed from Snatchmon's effect, the entire line will basically need to keep absorbing a lot of Vemmon from your trash in order to activate their effects. Which means, for the deck to get going, you are going to need to mill your deck a lot. Which also means it is probable that you might accidentally send your Snatchmons, Destromons, or Galacticmons to the trash, and that is not where you want them to be. But with Fusion Eyes, even if you end up milling them to the trash, it is still possible for you to access them with evolution. On security, you may reveal the top 3 cards of your deck, play 1 Vemmon from among without paying its memory cost, and trash the rest. So yep, it helps to mill your deck a bit, and the Vemmon that comes out can serve as an additional body and also help you search as well. Now we come to Destromon, level 5, ultimate unknown unknown. First of all, it has a special evolution condition where it can evolve from Vemmon for 6 cost. And this is super hype, because unlike organic Digimon, the Vemmon line didn't really follow like a natural evolution line. It doesn't evolve from like Vem to Snatch to Destro to Galactic. Instead, 
Destromon is the result when one Vemmon absorbed the data of Juggernaut, the most powerful battleship in the world, with its fusion eyes. So that's why it is extremely satisfying to see that Vemmon does have a direct evolution route into Destromon. On Evolve, reveal three cards from the top of your deck, place one Vemmon from among them at the bottom of this Digimon's evolution cards, trash the remaining. Then, if this Digimon has five or more Vemmon in its evolution cards, delete one of your opponent's tamers. So this time, the magic number is five, but as I explained earlier, if you have enough Vemmon in your trash, your Snatchmon should naturally end up with four Vemmon beneath it, so when you evolve it into Destro, the Vemmon that you absorb from the top of your deck will naturally be the fifth, unlocking its effect, while also milling more cards from the top of your deck to set up for future plays. And its effect to delete an opposing tamer could be a reference to how in the game, when Destromon first appears, it actually blows up an opposing fleet of naval ships. In other words, it probably killed some humans in the story. On Inheritable, opponents turn once per turn when your opponent's Digimon attacks by returning two Vemmon from one of your Galactic Mon's evolution cards to the bottom of your deck, switch the target of attack to this Digimon. Well, first of all, this is a very nice defensive effect that can stop your opponent's attack even if you don't have any blockers or if your blockers are suspended. Secondly, this effect now gives you a way to return the Vemmon in your evolution cards to deck bottom, meeting the activation conditions of Snatchmon's Inheritable. So even though Galactic Mon doesn't have reboots, I'll just go ahead and say that first, you can freely attack with it, then during the opponent's turn, when they attack, you use Destromon's Inheritable to force your opponent to attack Galactic Mon instead for a pseudo blocker. This now triggers Snatchmon's Inheritable to unsuspend your Galactic Mon and then turn it into a blocker so that it can then stop a second effect. So we are already starting to see a lot of defensive synergy within the evolution line. Now shall we move up and see the final form, Galactic Mon. This guy is so damn cool, level 6 mega unknown unknown, he is our second secret for BT11, Dimensional Phase. First of all, he has an evolution condition where he can evolve directly from Snatchmon for 9 cost. Again, this is a recreation of the events of the game. While Destromon was the result of a Vemmon assimilating with the Juggernaut warship, Galacticmon is the result of a Snatchmon assimilating with a satellite called the Gunslinger, which is why it kind of looks a bit like a spaceship. And not only are these evolution conditions faithful to the game characters, they also up the deck's consistency, because since it technically really only has one level 4, one level 5, and one level 6, it is quite possible that you will brick and be unable to complete the full line. On Evolve, you may place up to two Vemmon from your trash at the bottom of this Digimon's evolution cards. Then, if this Digimon has eight or more Vemmon in its evolution cards, delete one of your opponent's Digimon. So again, as I mentioned earlier, Snatchmon is designed to be able to naturally accumulate four Vemmon under it. So if you evolve from Snatch to Galactic directly and you do have four Vemmon in your trash, you'll definitely hit it. And of course, the same applies even if you go to Destromon, in that case, you'll end up with nine. All turns, when this Digimon would leave play, you may prevent it from leaving play by returning four Vemmon from this Digimon's evolution cards to the bottom of your deck. So yes, we finally have an effect which literally prevents a Digimon from leaving the battle area. So this of course can prevent deletion by either battle or effect, it prevents bounce to either hand or deck, and it also stops that super annoying new form of removal called being sent to security, aka Chaos Degradation, aka Long Kea Destacto. But as mentioned in Bandai's official video, it still cannot stop DP- and D Digivolve. DP- because if you reduce Galactic Mon's DP to zero, it's gonna be eliminated by the rules, right? So even if you save it from deletion by returning 4 Vemmon to deck bottom once, its DP is still gonna be zero, and it still enters the deletion loop anyway, so there is no way to escape it. As for the Digivolve, the Digivolve doesn't involve a Digimon leaving play, it's just a top card being removed. If they phrased it as something like, when this card would leave the battle area, then maybe it would stop the Digivolve as well. But honestly, I think it's a good decision on Bandai's part to keep it susceptible to the Digivolve as well, because if not, it would literally only be weak to D. DP minus, and I think yellow has enough already. One tricky question that's being asked around though is, does this make Galactic Mon immune to Bagramon's first Digicross? For those less familiar, Bagramon has this effect where if your opponent has two or more Digimon in play, place one of your opponent's Digimon under one of your opponent's other Digimon as its bottom evolution card. So the tricky part about this is that the literal Japanese wording of Galactic Mon's effect is when this Digimon would leave the battle area. So you can see it as two ways. If it is turning from a Digimon into an evolution card of another Digimon, you could see that as kind of leaving the battle area, so technically it should be able to be immune to this as well. 
But from another perspective, since it is becoming the evolution card of another Digimon, is it really leaving the battle area at the end of the day? So I don't want to say anything for certain, let's wait for Bandai's confirmation on this, but I'll just say that I think it can resist Bagramon's Force Digicross, because I think the logic where when it turns from a Digimon into an evolution card, it is kind of leaving the battle area, makes the most sense in line with the current rules. On top of helping your Galacticmon remain on the field, this effect is also very important because it gives you another way to return Vemmons from your evolution cards to deck bottom to trigger Snatchmon's Inheritable, so that Galacticmon can unsuspend and become a blocker. And this is especially important because there are gonna be scenarios where you're not able to evolve through Destromon. And without Destromon's Inheritable, Galacticmon definitely needs its own way to return its Vemmon Evolution cards to deck bottom in order to make the full use of its potential. But the best part of this effect is the faithful recreation once again, of the events of the game. Notice, with its on-evolve effect, Galacticmon wants you to have 8 Vemmon in its evolution cards. Which means that it will be able to survive removal twice, resulting in effectively 3 lives. And in the final battle against Galacticmon in Digimon World 3, its 3 body parts, tail, chest, and head, essentially act as different enemies. Now technically only the tail and head have life bars, the chest only appears for a moment in order to attack your Digimon, but at its heart, this effect nicely replicates the conditions of that boss fight. Finally, start of your main phase, trash the top card of your opponent's security. Well, there's not much to say here, is there? We've already seen how defensive this deck is going to be with Galactic Mon taking your opponent's attacks and then unsuspending to block further attacks. So it definitely needs a bit of that offensive push because just defending is not going to help you to win a battle. Now, why don't we try simulating how the deck might play? So on turn 1, you hatch a Dorimon, you definitely want to evolve into Vemmon, and I feel like one of the best plays to make here would be to drop 4 for a Pride Memory Boost. In the best case scenario, two of the cards you reveal will be two Vemmons, and this is not too unlikely because you can have up to 50 copies in your deck. As for the third, while another Vemmon would be awesome, that is probably like too miraculous to hope for, I think anything from Destromon, uh, Galacticmon, or Fusionize would actually be a nice third card to drop at this moment as well. So let's just say it's Fusionize, you play one Vemmon, and then the remaining two cards are trashed. Now the opponent does stuff, and let's say they pass back the memory at one, and you move Vemmon out. First, you attack with the new Vemmon. Since it has 1000 DP, it is most likely going to be deleted and go into your trash. Then you activate the main effect of the Vemmon with Dorimon, suspending it, catching a Vemmon and hopefully one other card of the deck. So that now, you can attach one Vemmon to its evolution cards and also search out another key card. And with Dorimon's Inheritable, you gain a draw as well. Now. Since your Vemmon has another Vemmon under it and you have two Vemmon in your trash, the ideal play to make would be to evolve it into Snatchmon. But if you do this from one memory, you will ultimately be ending the turn with a suspended Snatchmon on your field. So your opponent is likely going to be able to counterattack and get rid of this body that you've built up. So that's where Pride Memory Boost comes in where you can use its delay in order to get a 2 memory back to 3 from 1 and then pay 3 in order to evolve into Snatch. And with its on evolve, you can place the two Vemmon on the trash under it as evolution cards while also recycling one fusion ice. Now, since you have four Vemmon under this Snatchmon, with the combined effects of their four inheritables, the cost for Snatchmon to evolve into Destromon is reduced by one. So for only one cost, your Snatchmon can now evolve into Destromon. And with 10k DP on turn 2, even though he is suspended, I think this is a relatively safe position. In fact, later in the game, if you already have enough Vemmon in your trash, it also probably wouldn't be a bad decision to get this a minus 4 reduction and pay 5 to evolve Snatchmon directly into Galacticmon. Also, if you are at this point and you do not have Destromon or Galacticmon in your hand, maybe because you accidentally milled them. With Pride Memory Boost, for example, the recycled Fusion Eyes can be used to force the evolution. In fact, in this scenario, you could even put Destromon under Snatchmon in order to give it the Inheritable while evolving it up into Galacticmon. Now, once you have a fully grown Galacticmon on the field, this is where the fun begins. On your turn, you freely attack, pass it over to the opponent, while Galacticmon is suspended. Then when your opponent's Digimon attacks, you can use Destromon's Inheritable, returning two Vemmon from Galacticmon's evolution cards to deck boredom in order to change the attack target to Galacticmon, and if the Digimon is weaker, they'll die. Which will at the same time trigger Snatchmon's Inheritable, allowing Galacticmon to unsuspend and gain blocker for the turn. 
So now when their second Digimon attacks, I mean they probably wouldn't because your Galacticmon can just block and kill it as well. Alright, that's all I have to say about the Galactic Mon deck today. Personally, I don't see it making any large impact on the meta, but I think that is also a good thing, because since it's a secret, you don't want to force people to spend the money on it just to become relevant. Still though, it sounds like it'll be super fun to play, and it's a deck that I'm really hyped to try out. Hopefully you guys found this video useful, and I will see you guys in the next Digimon card video.